got a new multimodal model called Reka. It comes in two different flavors. And the authors of this model is saying that this model, at least the Reka Flash is better than Gemini Pro. So in this video, I'm going to just go through the announcement and then explain certain benchmarks. But also I've done some testing with the model, especially the multimodal capabilities or to be specific, the vision language capabilities. Then we'll see how this model fares against what we see from Google paper. To start with, this is a new, new blog post. The reason why I decided to cover this model is because of the efficiency of this model. So this is a 21 billion parameter model and this model absolutely crushes many other models on multiple benchmarks. I'm not even talking about the language task. I'm more interested in the vision task. If you see on multiple vision related benchmarks, this model is doing pretty good and that is one of the reason I wanted to cover this particular model. So this model or this company launches two models at this point. One is a Reka Flash. The second one is Reka Edge. Reka Flash is a 21 billion parameter model, while Reka Edge is a 7 billion parameter model. In this case, the more efficient, smaller in size, making it easier for to run on local devices. But this is for a web deployment, which will be easier for you to serve from the web. They also have one more model, which they are not releasing at this point, which is what they call as Reka Core. It's very similar to what Google is doing with Google Gemini, Google Gemini Ultra, Pro and Nano. But this 7 billion is bigger than nano in itself. So with this information, if you go check the benchmarks in itself, fairly therefore try to make sure that the benchmark comparison is as close as possible. You can see Reka Flash scoring much better than Google Gemini Pro, much better than Google Gemini Pro. Pro once again on a certain other tasks like GPQA. It's a graduate level QA. So on MMLU and GPQA, Reka Flash scores better than Gemini Pro. And if you compare it with GPT 3.5 here, which is what uh, open AI's open model, like or the chat, the free chat model, not the GPT 4 model. I shouldn't have said open. Uh, so if you compare this Reka Flash with this. So it is still scoring better than this particular model, GPT 3.5 on MMLU. If you compare this with Mistral, Mixtral, which is one of the best open source models available till date, Reka Flash scores above Mixtral, which is the 8x 7 billion parameter model. I'm not going to compare it with every other model here because it doesn't make a lot of sense. GPT-4 and Gemini Ultra are on a different league altogether. But simply looking at this model, this seems like a really competitive model for a 21 billion parameter. When you compare it with Gemini Pro, GPT-3.5 and Mixtral 45 billion parameter model. If you are an Elon Musk fan, you can compare it with Grok as well. Grok has got a 73.0 score on MMLU while Grok scores much lesser on GSM 8K and Grok does not have GPQA score. So, you know, it's it's not easy for them to compare it on human evil, which uh, evaluates the coding capability of the model. You can see Reka Flash scoring 65.2 while GPT 3.5 zero shot scored 48.1 and it also surpasses Grok 1 which is 63.2. So overall it seems like a really good model for coding, reasoning and knowledge QA. So even though this is called reasoning, I would probably say this is purely math. Now it has got multilingual capabilities. I'm not going over the benchmark. There are a lot of wide variety ranges of languages. You have got like Indonesian, you've got Hindi, you've got Arabic. You've got Telugu from India, you've got Urdu, again in Indian language, Tamil, you've got English, German, you've got like multiple languages that also makes this model really good because it's not just a single language model and also a multilingual model. Almost seems like they wanted to model it against Gemini because Gemini is a multilingual model. And if you take multimodal benchmarks, which is the massive multi understanding of multimodal understanding. If you see that particular benchmark, it's almost like MMLU equivalent in the multimodal world. So Gemini Pro has scored 47.9 while Reka Flash has scored 51.3 in image Q&A. And the same thing with other Q&A models like VQA. So you can see Reka Flash has scored 77.7 .7 and Gemini Pro has scored 71.2. And even on video captioning and video test, it is almost either better or on par with Gemini Pro. I think this is quite promising. In fact, like when Adept launched FIU, uh, it had a lot of press. It had a lot of um, 
exciting announcements but this model seems to be once again crushing every other models other than gemini ultra and gpt4 vision so it seems like a really good model and if you want to understand how they went about building the model first of all they have two different setups so one they've got like a text only chat setup then they've got a multi-modal setup and they took the base models instruction fine-tuned it then rlhf with p P O not D P O. So this is a proximity preference optimization. I guess um, we have not like gone deeper into P P O on this channel. So maybe I'll make a separate video about like P P O. But they have used one of the techniques, um, optimization techniques, to RLHF or align this model with whatever the alignment that you have got, and uh, it's it was like already an instruction fine tuned model. So. They have also done an arena kind of a setup instead of having like raw benchmarks. Um, so they said, okay, the human evaluation out of thousand prompts uh, preferred Reka Flash with an ELO score of a thousand forty five. The win rate is fifty seven point four, which is only below GPT four, which is very impressive. Even when you compare it with Gemini Pro, Gemini Ultra couldn't have been compared at this point because I think they launched it before Gemini Ultra was launched. Or at least they would have done the test before Gemini Ultra was launched. And the comparison, like if you see the comparison, there is a huge difference in terms of like, for example, let's say Claude Instant 1.2, Claude 2.1 as well. So you can see this is 51.3% win rate and this is 57.4% win rate. So GPT-4 still is the king, but Reka Flash seems to be like a very good next step. Um, for the size that it is, maybe Reka Core will be much better than this. So now for multimodal chat, once again, you would see Reka Flash scoring just next to GPT-4 Vision, but the difference reduces here. Here there is a 200 point ELO difference, but here it is almost like 150 point ELO difference. And the win rate has approximately about like 15 percentage point difference. Okay, that is all the information that I wanted to cover about the model benchmarks, rest of the things that you can go read it yourself. But I wanted to quickly go over the benchmark test that we have done. The way you can use this model is you can go click this link this link will take you to record or record chat chat.raker.ai and you can go here ask any question i've already asked a bunch of questions which we are going to go over but if you simply want to go ask any question here you can go upload the image send the message and then chat you can also compare between these two models between Reka flash and Reka edge the test that i did i did only on Reka flash it doesn't doesn't honestly like make a lot of sense for me to try it with Reka Edge unless until I know that this is an open source model. But Reka Flash test, let's start, get started. Let's start with the physics homework. This is from Google Gemini paper and all we are going to ask is to explain whether the student's answer is right or not right. And the model starts generating the solution and it starts with the very first line, the student solution is correct. So that means it follows instruction well. But then the problem is once you get to the answer, so wait for the answer to come. The student has written 39.6 and the answer it says is 28.19 millisecond or meters per second. And it says this is the final answer. And it says the student's final answer is 39.6, which is incorrect. So that means that it started with an answer, which is technically not right, but it still arrived at the final solution, which is right. I mean, there are certain trust issues with models like this while it tries to follow the instruction. On the other hand, Google Gemini Ultra has correctly said that the student gave the wrong answer. But anyways, let's move on to the next problem. In this case, we are asking it to create code for us. So we are going to give a set of matplotlib plots and then we are going to ask it to create a code, a Python code that would give us the right plots in the same right angle. And the problem again, once again, is that it understands the problem. It tries to recreate it, but it is not 100% correct. So you'll see that shortly because the input that we have given is the input has got four images. It is, it is in Python, if you know that it has got four subplot, but from what you can see here is that it actually creates two subplot and then it tries to create that image for you. And that itself is a problem because we actually wanted four plots, it creates two plots. So let's try the code within Visual Studio Code and then see, and this is what it has created. This is almost very identical to the two plots that we have got from the input that we gave. So that itself is right, but it is not 100% complete because it very well forgot the other two plots, uh, maybe it did not recognize it or it recognized it, but it could not translate it as code. So once again, it is 
correct, but it is not 100% correct. So now let's do some chart understanding. So we have uploaded a chart from our world and data, and then we are asking it to give us back the response, two responses. One, give us what is the highlight, and then second, give us the table. So it gives us the highlight, which is United States, but it gives us a wrong metric. So technically you wanted to say that United States has got like the 73% um, landfill, which is the highest, but it gives us United States and it points out to a different metric, which in this case it says like, okay, 90% incinerated is the highest, which is not true. In fact, like it hallucinates there by saying the average is 10% there, which is not true. It gives us the right table, it points to the United States, but it does not give us the right answer once again. So it is once again doing a really good job in following instructions, but not to up to the mark. Let's understand if it understands this plant. So this plant name, it says Huchera, and uh, this is very different from what Google Gemini Ultra has predicted. So Google Gemini Ultra has got a different plant name and this has said, this is Huchera, which is a coral bells. The plant looks similar, so I don't know at this point, I don't have the ground truth to verify whether this is Persian shield plant or whether it is Huchera, but either way, it has done its job of giving me what the plant is and it has given me the steps how to take care of the plant. Next, let's ask a visual reasoning question, which in this case is you have got a triangle, a square, and then a pentagon, and then you are asking the question, what should come next? And it's quite obvious for a human brain that you see three, four, five, and then you know that the next one should have six si uh, sides, and then that should be the answer, for which a hexagon is the right answer, and this absolutely gets the right answer. Next, we are going to show the picture of a moon and a golf ball, and ask it to make a connection with historical events, that's a hint. And it says left side is a moon, but it says the right side is also appearing to be the model of a moon, which is absolutely 100% incorrect. It's not moon, it's not moon rock. And this is exactly where it starts hallucinating, just like every other case we have seen, that it hits the mark, but just below the mark. It makes a very good educated connection between moon and moon rock, but it's not moon rock, it's a golf ball, and that is not the answer that we were expecting. Next, my favorite with any multi-model model is to explain memes. This is a meme from Google Gemini Ultra paper, and then we have just shared it, and then asked it to explain the meme. So if you're a human, you know that you're trying to understand this meme very well. So you one, you're talking about a game that is going at 300 FPS, but your monitor is 70 Hertz monitor. So the refresh rate doesn't do justice for the game frames per second. So ultimately you're not getting what you wanted. But this gets it wrong at multiple different levels. One, instead of 300 FPS, it assumes that it is 30 FPS, probably because the zero, the final zero is slightly cropped. And then it goes on about explaining totally different subject about marketing and other things. Maybe that is a different perception to see it. Like I don't honestly see that it is a perception that I would understand that, you know, game manufacturers or monitoring ma monitor manufacturers are trying to cheat us by showing a 300 FPS game with a 75 hertz monitor. I didn't think about that kind of an angle, but that is the angle that this large language model is saying. Let me know in the comments if that angle is valid, but for me, it is the bottleneck with 300 FPS and 75 hertz. Because this model is multilingual, let's ask a multilingual visual Q&A. So I'm uploading the image from Google Gemini Ultra paper, which is a family tree written in Chinese. And I'm asking what should I call my grandparents on each side of the tree. It gives me the right answer. In this case, it does a good job of explaining like what is paternal grandparents called, what are maternal grandparents called, and then it explains individual terms for like father and mother and all these things. For this question, at least, I think like it has done a pretty good job. One, understanding the picture. Second, understanding the multilingual understanding, which in this case is Chinese. It'll be a bummer if I don't ask this question. So let's ask this question. Write a joke about Elon Musk. And this is a question that I've asked a lot of LLMs. And here is the joke. Why don't scientists trust atoms when Elon Musk is involved because they make up everything. The joke is fine and uh, I don't understand why that has anything to do with Elon Musk. So maybe the joke is on me. This is a censorship question that I recently asked ChatGPT and ChatGPT outright refused to give me an answer. I write a blog post on why RLHF is a scam and this model did not stop answering this question. In fact, it takes an approach. It says that it is a balanced approach, but that also goes about saying how this might have been aligned at this point. So overall, I think this model, uh, at least this, the 
current version of the model that we are dealing with is not as good as Google Gemini Ultra, which is definitely not what they're claiming. It is almost as good as Google Gemini Pro, which I can probably see from the multimodal understanding. The only catch of the bummer is at this point, I have no clue this model if it is going to be open source or not but i still found it quite interesting that a 21 billion parameter model could be better than google gemini pro in multimodal capabilities that brings me to the biggest question like where is the moat in the ai world because it almost seems like all you need is a lot of data a lot of compute a lot of training a lot of epochs then you probably could have a better model than the biggest company in the world or one of the biggest companies in the world so where is the moat I don't know. Let's see what happens next.